Now let's get practical and talk about how to publish an RFC within the IETF. The RFCs are the IETF standards publications. So when you get something done, you publish as an RFC. There are different ways to do that. There are three different basic ways. We'll talk about each, each one of those ways. First of all, the simple way is through the IETF track that's going through a working group. The document is reviewed by a working group and progressed by a working group, and it's a working group document. And it, that can be used for any type of RFC. It's also an individual submission process through the IETF track, where also all, all types of RFCs can be used, can be published, but it's an individual rather than a working group. And then the third way is through an independent submissions track, which does not go through the IETF per se, and it doesn't go through an IETF working group. But it's, a, it's an escape valve that other people can publish without going through the IETF process. First thing you need to do is, if you've got a great idea, do a sanity check on it. Talk to a bunch of people. You may have developed it, and you may think it's great, but other people may not agree with your level of greatness, and they may have different experiences that leads them to different conclusions. So san sanity check. Check it around. Talk, talk to people about your idea. And when you get a positive response on that, then go ahead and move on. Otherwise, listen to what they say and maybe take their advice that it's not ready for prime time or maybe that they think it is ready for prime time. The next thing you do is you publish your ideas within an internet draft. The internet draft is just a simple document. It has to be in a particular format. You can find that format online. Uh, and that document is your explanation of what your ideas are. It could be a standard, it could be an informational document just about what your ideas on, on some process or standard or just information for the community. When you publish the internet draft, when you're doing your own internet draft, the name of that draft is draft dash, then your last name, and then some text about explaining what the uh, draft is about. It's, the la it's your last name. If there are multiple authors, then it's the last name of the, the lead author. If you are going to be targeting this internet draft at a working group, you should include that working group name in the document name. Shouldn't be draft working group name, it should be draft your last name, working group name, and then some, exp some explanatory text saying what the document's about. That the advantage of doing this way is the automatic tools will now associate your draft with the working group. Doesn't mean the working group has adopted it or agreed to it. It just means that if somebody's looking up on the working group web page, it'll be listed. Your document will be listed there. Note that the IETF doesn't work on the number of companies or the number of people whose names are on the document. So if you've got an internet draft with 15 authors, it's going to be no better in terms of its possibility of being adopted as an internet draft with two authors. So you, you need to limit the number of authors that are listed on the first page. And in fact, there are rules from the RSC editor that say no more than seven authors can be listed. Other folks should be included in the acknowledgement section or the contributors or a contributor section, but don't mass up on authors just to think that this will make it more likely to get through. It doesn't change the probability of it getting through. So the first possibility is going through the IETF track through a working group. If a working group exists that's working on the topic that your, that your draft is about, then you can go talk to the, uh, the working group chairs to see whether uh, they're interested in talking about your draft. If it's meeting an a open requirement within the working group charter, then that's a good thing that they, the working group needs to produce that. They may already have an internet draft they're working on in that, filling that uh, blank point in the charter. If not, then maybe your document would be a good one. So you publish a document, talk to the chairs, uh, send an announcement to the working group mailing list saying that you published the document and asking for folks to take a look at it. And then ask the, a separate message, ask the working group whether they consider adopting your internet draft for a working group document. Working group document will get formally listed in the, uh, in the working group's charter, the charter page, 
and it will be republished with the working group name, so moving from draft dash your last name to working uh, to a uh, name of draft dash IETF dash working group name. Uh, that IETF dash working group name says that the working group has adopted it. Note that it may take a number of revisions before the working group is agreed to take your document on as a working group document if it decides to do it at all. There's no requirement for a working group to adopt somebody else's ideas. Uh, if the working group decides as a rough consensus to do so, then it will do so. But if not, then that's the end of the road for this path. There are other paths, but that's the end of the road for this path. So if, if, it is, if the working group agrees to adopt the document, then they republish the internet draft with the working group name. The working group will discuss the draft. The draft will be, needs to be revised based on those discussions. It can go through many, many iterations. Um, there's, BGP went through over 26 re revisions in order before the document was ready for publication. Most of the work's done on mailing lists. So if you discuss the draft, you produce an iteration of the draft with a number, an up, upgraded uh, version number at the end. Uh, every time that you feel that there's enough discussion to, to resolve some issue, you publish a new version. Uh, if you tr do as much of this as you can on the mailing list, uh, if you feel that there's some very high-level, important face-to-face -face discussions that are required to resolve some issue, you ask for time at an IETF meeting, a working group session at an IETF meeting to do that. Or sometimes working groups have interim meetings, either virtual interim meetings or physical interim, me interim meetings, and you discuss your higher-level points there. Keep revising the draft until the working group believes that it's ready, ready to move. When the working group thinks it's done, the working group chair may, there's no requirement to do this, but the working group chair may issue what is known as a working group last call. That's a special message to the working group mailing list saying, we think this is done. Uh, you've got two weeks or whatever time period that the working group chair wants to dedicate to it to comment on it. And it goes out to the entire uh, mailing list for that working group. There's not a requirement to do that. It's a general, general rule that working group chairs do do that, but there's not a requirement to do it. There may be comments that come in during that working group last call period. If so, there may be, have to be revisions of the internet draft to meet those comments. The, a working group will have to designate a document shepherd. Document shepherd does a write-up for the ISG and sort of shepherds the document through the ISG process. If you remember, the ISG is the standards and publication approval body for the IETF. When the working group believes it's done after the working group last call and any revisions to, to the document that were necessitated by that last call, the working group chair sends a request to publish message to the responsible AD. And the responsible AD is the area director whose primary responsibility is for this working group. An area may have two or three uh, area directors. The working groups are split up amongst them as to which one's the primary or responsible AD for each working group. So message goes off to the area director. Uh, the area director then reviews the idea in internet draft to see whether the area director figures it, feels that it's ready. The area director may have technical issues. It may have uh, process issues, may have format issues, lots of things that the area director could do. Uh, anything from pure pure technology to whether the, the document is readable, whether it's, uh, whether it's understandable. The area director may send the document back to the working group with comments asking for revisions uh, in order to make it ready for the area director feels that it's ready for the IESG. Um, if it, when the area director feels that it's ready, then the area director will send a request to the IESG um, and the write-up. The write-up has to be done by that time. The document shepherd will have done the write-up by then. The, the, since the, the area director sends the request for publication to the IESG, the IESG will then issue an IETF-wide last call for comments. That, that last call goes to the entire IETF announced mailing list. 
So it's for people in other working groups, people who are not specifically in any working group. So they all get a chance to review your document. It also goes to other standards development organizations through a, process, through a mailing list that's called New Work. That means that other standards organizations, IEEE, W3C, ITU, can look at your document and if they have any comments on it, maybe your document overlaps something they're doing or contradicts something they're doing, they can send comments in. This normal working, the normal last call period is two weeks. The ISG sends out a last call saying, we're evaluating this, we haven't made a decision yet, please uh, comment on it by such and such a date. The, uh, the, there may be reviewers th that are assigned to review it in addition to the general last call. A number of areas have directorates, area directorate, like transport area and operations area have directorates. And the directorates are asked by the area directors to review documents with that for issues within that area. So the operational requirements area uh, directorate will review any document that goes in front of the ISG to see whether there's any operationally related issues. There's also a general art uh, reviewer who is a general, general area reviewer. It's a, a, a special directorate of people who look at all internet drafts to check them out for all kinds of things. It's not just for technology, it's for readability and everything else. When all the ISG gets all of these information back from the assigned reviewers, plus any comments from other SDOs, plus any comments from the last call, the ISG will then, ISG members, the area, other area directors, will then review the internet draft on their own. Some of them will defer to the comments they got from the directorate reviewer, but most of them will review the internet draft on their own. And they are now looking at this through their own eyes to see whether they think it's ready. Security people are looking at the document to see that it does security properly. The transport area people are looking at it to make sure it does congestion control properly and things like that. When the, each, of the, each individual area director then records their opinion, a vote in a sense, of whether the, the area director believes the document is ready for publication. An area director who feels that there's some issue, some serious issue, with the document can record what is called a discuss. And a discuss says that the author of the document, you in this case, need to talk with the area director to find out what the issues are. The area director will publish a set of comments um, to, so that you will get the general idea, but maybe you need to exchange some mail with the area director that's recorded the discuss to find out in more detail what the issue was and to figure out what you need to do to the document to satisfy the area director before the, IS, before the area director will remove their discuss and let the ISG proceed. You can tell the status of where things are within the ISG by looking at the data tracker. And the URL for the data tracker is on the, on the screen here. Data tracker is sort of a dashboard that you can look up internet drafts on or RCs. It's, it's a generally useful thing to find out what the status of a particular document is. You can find out who's, which area directors have an expressed an opinion and if they have any comments, what those comments are. It's a generally useful thing. Normally, if it, it's the most common case is when a document goes in front of the IESG, one or more iterations, modifications of the document are going to be required before the ISG will say okay. And so you'll have to publish additional ver revisions of the document until the ISG is satisfied. Any of this, such, such revisions need to be checked out with a working group as well. Because this is a working group document, it's not just your document anymore. The document has to reflect the consensus of the working group. And if you want to make a change in it, the, the working group has to be satisfied that that's a reasonable change to make. When the ISG is done and all of the issues have been settled and the final version of the internet draft is ready, that meets all of the objections, if any, of the ISG members, then the ISG will send a publication request to the RFC editor and the RFC editor will then <coughs> copy edit the internet draft and put, send a copy to you to say, this is what we've done to it. We th think it needed an extra comma here, or the wording there should be a little clearer, 
or that the uh, that we want to put it into a, cent, a, a style similar to other RFCs, whatever. You get a chance to review that, any changes that the RFC editor did. And in fact, you must review it. The RFC editor will not publish a document that all of the authors have not signed off on and said, yes, it's ready to go. When it's finally ready to go, the RFC editor will then publish it as an RFC with a RFC number. Here's a picture of that process from the working group to an area director. Area director may push concerns back to the working group. Then the ISG evaluates it, sends the last call to the IETF community, can then pop, which then pops uh, concerns back to the ISG, which then may send concerns back to the working group. And if the ISG is finally satisfied, it can send off a, a request to publish it as an RFC. In theory, the ISG can reject a document from, the, from a working group. It doesn't happen very often, but in theory it can. It can say that this is just too broken. There is technical issues with it, or it's just unreadable. Uh, the, uh, the working group should have not sent up a document that's in that bad shape, but it, in theory, can happen, and it has happened, but not very often. So that's what you do if your, your document is within the charter the topic of your internet draft is within the charter of a working group. If it's not in the charter, then the working group's not supposed to work on it. So you, if you want your document to be adopted by the working group, then you have to convince the working group chairs that this is a topic that is relevant to the working group's uh, mission. And then the working group chairs have to ask the IESG for a revision of the charter. If once you've got that done, and it, there's no requirement that for the working group to adopt any any proposal, so the working group chairs can say no, we don't think this is relevant, or we already have something here, or we don't think the topic is relevant. Uh, the working group chairs can say that. The working group itself can, uh, it, by rough consensus, say they don't believe that this is something the working group should work on, or the ISG can say no, we're not going to expand the charter of this working group to cover this work because the working group hasn't done its current work, or because we don't think this work is right for the IETF, whatever. So there's, this is all at the, at, the, um, at the okay of the ISG and of the working group and of the working group chairs. There's no requirement just because you ask for it to be done, no requirement that it will be done. But if the charter is updated to include this work, then you go back to the, the slides before, which shows you how to proceed when, the, when an internet draft is within the working group charter. Now, there's an IETF process that you can follow as an individual that you don't go through a working group. If there, if there is no working group that's, that's directed to this particular area, or you think that this is something special, then you can try and publish something as an individual submission. Some significant percentage, 10% or 15% of RFCs that go through the IETF track do not go through a working group. They go through as indi individual submissions. So let's say you have your internet draft, you've published the internet draft, you always have to do that before, before trying to do anything. Uh, you then go talk to an area director in the appropriate area just ask whether that area director believes that this document, this internet draft, could, le could lead to an RFC that would be of use. The area director might say no, they don't think so. Or they might ask you to do some work, set up a mailing list, use an existing mailing list, and then hold a discussion. Find out whether there's other people in the IETF who believe that your document is a worthwhile thing. If, uh, if, if so, then maybe the area director will uh, sponsor a BOF, a Birds of a Feather session. Whether the BOF is held or not, then if the, the area director is supportive, then you can start working on an internet, uh, the internet draft, uh, iterating it by talking to the community, setting up your mailing list and having folks talk about your, your document, pretty much as if it were in a working group, but it's not. It's in your own mailing list. No, if it is a working group is going to get set up for this document, then usually you won't be chosen as the chair. The document author, the internet draft author, is not normally chosen as the chair of the working group because there's a conflict of interest. 
the chair is supposed to be able to gauge consensus on what goes into a technical standard or an informational document. And if you're one of the authors of the document, that's harder for you to judge, uh, to be reason a reasonable uh, judge of consensus. So if, there's, if the area director believes this is an important enough topic, then a working group can be formed with or without a BOF. Otherwise, you can proceed as an in individual submission, in which case this is just you maybe you and your co-authors. You set up the mailing list, you discuss it on the mailing list, you keep iterating it, making new versions of the internet draft, and when you think it's ready, then you go to the area director that has encouraged this work and say, we think it's ready. If the area director reviews it and agrees that it's ready, then the area director can forward it on to the ISG. But again, the area director is not required to do this. The IR director could have told you no to the begin with, and then if you come back later saying, well, here it is, the area director can say, I told you no. I'm not going to go back on that. Or the area director can say, it didn't come out the way I thought it was going to, so I'm not going to do anything with it. It's up to the area director. There's no requirement for the area director to support your, your project. But if the, IS, the area director does agree to review it and agrees that after review that it's ready for prime time, it sends the publication, that area director then hands it to the ISG, which does the same process as is done with a working group document, except the last call period is four weeks long instead of the two week long period for a working group document. Everything else is the same. Then there's an additional track. Those two tracks were the IETF tracks. Now there's an additional track, an independent submissions track. You cannot publish standards through the independent submissions track. You can only ex publish experimental RFCs or informational RFCs. No, stand no standards track or BCP RFCs. But you can publish things that you believe are of interest to the community. So it's a safety valve, and the picture there is of a safety valve. The idea is that if you have proposed this great idea and no working group has supported it or it was rejected by a working group, it was a alternative proposal to a working group and the working group re rejected it, you can get it published through, you may be able to get it published through the independent submissions track so that your, your ideas are out there, your ideas are published in an RFC. It won't be the work of the IETF, it'll be your individual work, but it'll still be published as an RFC. It's an important safety valve. Uh, for dealing with alternative ideas. So this is something John Postel was very concerned with when he was doing being the RFC editor many, many years ago. You, you wrote your internet draft, you've iterated it based on your discussions with your friends or, or set up a mailing list or however you want to do it. When you believe that it's ready for publication, then you submit the internet draft to the independent stream editor, the ISE. The ISE has an editorial review board. Uh, the R R ISE can review the document him or herself and decide it's just not, it's not relevant. Um, the ISE has been asked to publish documents which are commentary on other standards processes or things like that, and that's just not relevant. Things which would be good journal papers uh, in technical journals may not be the right sort of thing for the RFC series. RFC series is assumed to be documents that are relevant to the internet or the internet protocols. So the ISE can decide that on his or her own or can ask his, his or her editorial review board. The review board reviews, one of the people on the review board uh, would take, a, take it on, take a look at it and may give advice to the ISE. Uh, the ISE then takes that advice, looks at it themselves, uh, his or herself, and then decides whether whether they're going to be published. That's it's entirely ISE's decision. There is no requirement for the IS, uh, the ISE and the independent stream to publish any document. It's entirely voluntary on the part of the ISE. The ISE may say it's it looks okay, but we need some work. Uh, it needs it needs work in this area or that area. It needs to be. Some part of it needs to be rewritten so it's more understandable, whatever. It's entirely up to the ISE to do that. Once the ISE has a document that the ISE thinks is publishable, then the ISE asks the, internet, the IESG 
whether the ISG has an issue with the publishing this document. Sometimes the, I, the ISG can say, don't publish this because it's a danger to the internet. Or don't publish it now because this is conflict with a working group document and we want the working group document to be published first. Most of the time, the ISG says, we don't care. We don't have any particular objection. The ISG can also re request, but not require, that the ISE add an IESG statement to the beginning of the document to say, this is not an IETF piece of work, or here's the problems with it. Uh, the ISG can, can decide to include that statement or to, can decide not to include the statement. It's up to the ISC. It's a separate, independent stream. Most of the time when the ISG says, please add this ISG statement to it, the ISC agrees to that. Well, then we'll ask you whether, it, whether you still want to publish it even with the ISG statement. If so, then the, the ISC does, sends, it, sends a request to publish off to the RFC editor. There's some additional resources here. There's an informal guide to the IETF process, which URL there. There's a ISG statement on how you become a document shepherd um, and what's needed in that thing. And then, as I said before, you can monitor the progress of what's going on with the Area Internet Draft by looking at the data tracker.